you guys. So a couple months ago, uh, Morgan Gold of Goldshaw Farms actually reached out to um, me and a few other homesteading YouTubers to see if we'd like to collaborate with him in hatching duck eggs. Now, hatching duck eggs is notoriously difficult because unlike hatching chicken eggs, there's additional uh, steps and procedures that you have to go through. They require more humidity. And so he thought it'd be really fun to document a few other homesteaders trying to incubate duck eggs. And this is my second time hatching duck eggs. I've done it before. Um, the last time I hatched was actually an experiment seeing if I could hatch duck eggs and chicken eggs together. And it was successful actually. The act actually the hatch rate was about the same as what uh, I expected. So I was pretty happy with that. So, but I was really excited to get the chance to incubate duck eggs by themselves and uh, really just focus on that. So Morgan sent me 11 duck eggs all the way from Vermont. They made a full, huge, long trek from Vermont all the way down here to South Florida. And I got them set up to where they could rest for 24 hours. And then I got them in the incubator. So I'm gonna share with you guys our journey in incubating duck eggs that we got from Morgan Gold with Goldshaw Farms. So one of the things that you wanna do whenever you're setting up your incubator is you wanna set up your incubator um, about 24 to 48 hours before you set your eggs so that you know that it's regulating properly, the temperature is correct, the humidity is correct, and everything is fully ready. So I've got the humidator, I set it up yesterday, the humidator. I got the incubator set up yesterday and it's currently at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. I know that ducks need higher humidity than chickens, chicken eggs. Uh, but I can't seem to find anything with any solid uh, yes or no answer. It's some, some places say 55% um, percent humidity, some places say 65% percent humidity. So I'm going to try and just kind of stay in the middle uh, between 55 and 65% percent humidity. So we're going to go ahead and set these eggs in the incubator and get them going. So the first of the eggs to go in are the ones from Morgan Gold. So I'm gonna set these up here. And I marked the two sides <laughs> for, for Morgan's. I marked them M for Morgan, G for gold. Thought that would be funny. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these eggs in there. And then we're gonna fill the incubator with the rest of the way with our eggs from our ducks. put all this in here. Why not? Ducks set on a cluster of eggs and they're all close together, so let's mimic nature. So we'll just go ahead and start putting all these eggs in here. And just set them up the way ducks would incubate them. I don't think we have enough eggs in here. I think we could fit more eggs in here. <laughs> All right, okay, so all of them are set. All of my eggs have the X up, all of Morgan's eggs have the M up, and that helps me track which eggs I've turned and which eggs I have not turned. So we're gonna go ahead and get the lid back on now. Make sure that the thermometer is sitting on top in the center, and boom. So it is day seven and I'm really excited to see just how they've been doing. You'll notice that I had laid the eggs out on their sides, no egg turner. And the reason why I did this is because the egg turners that I normally use, I actually have it right, I actually have it right here. The egg turner design, the conventional, there are some different ones, but the way they work is they will, they have these trays and the trays will just go like this and that is their way of turning the eggs. Now, for chicken eggs, that's perfect, but for duck eggs, duck eggs need to be turned fully. So that's the first problem with these types of egg turners is that the duck eggs are not truly fully being turned. The other problem with these is that um, the size comparison between chicken eggs and duck eggs Duck eggs are a lot bigger than chicken eggs. 
So when you've got much bigger eggs being sustained up in the air by these trays, the top of the egg is closer to the heat source. So the temperature difference between the top of the egg and the bottom of the egg is just, it's very, it's a huge difference. And so I've read that that can actually, that can actually um, affect the uh, hatch rate. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and turn these by hand. So the suggested amount of times that you turn the eggs is three to five times or even as high as seven times. But the biggest thing is that you want to do an odd number of turns so that when the eggs rest for the night, they're always resting on a new side. So I'm turning my eggs five times a day. With that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, open these up and check and see how they did. Today is day seven, and so we are going to go ahead and candle the eggs to see which ones took, which ones didn't, um, and just see how they did. I'm excited to see how many eggs took because I've got a lot of eggs in here, but I'm hoping that a lot of them took. So this is kind of a uh, non-professional way of doing it, but I just use the flashlight on my phone. And so basically we're gonna go ahead and lift. And it's time for me to turn them as well, so I'm just gonna check them and turn them as I put them back in if they took. Now if they didn't take, um, I really should take them out, but I feel like I should just leave them in. So let's start with the first one. Yeah. Oh, look at that. So you see this, let's see if we can find the embryo. Ah, there it is. So you see that little, that little mass right there? That is a duckling forming. All right, so this one's gonna go in and we're gonna turn it now. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed through checking see this one's also got some developmental activity see how this there's a light side and a dark side so i am hoping that that means there's some activity in there so we're going to put this one in too all right so stopping here see this so we can see the yolk, but it is mostly light. So I believe that this one would be considered a dud. So I'm gonna leave it in there just to see if anything forms, but it does not look uh, favorable. So I'll leave this one in there and see what happens. But I'm gonna go ahead and mark it that this is a potential dud. All right, so that is all of my eggs. So now we're gonna check Morgan's eggs and see how they did. Ah, that is favorable. So this is a, a tinted egg. So I believe this is a, a Cayuga cross. You can kind of see this, some of the tinting here, but that solid mass in there is a good sign. All right. So, so far, day seven, they're doing pretty good. I had a total of, I believe, 39 eggs. And at first we were doing really good with a lot of them taking. And then all of a sudden there was a big batch of them that looked like they were potential duds. They might just be delayed. There is still a possibility that they could develop and form, but there is also a possibility that they could be duds. And this could be a number of factors. What was really weird, because I believe I had a total of 10 dud eggs, out of my 30, out of my 39, um, not including Morgan's. But what was weird was it started out as like maybe like two, three, four, and then all of a sudden five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row duds. So it could be that that was just purely coincidence, and the the few duds that just weren't fertilized happened to get together whenever I placed them. It could be that there's an issue with my incubator in that spot that maybe the temperature is just not right. There's so many factors that could affect why those eggs did not take and that they they just didn't develop. It looks like there was some action. I don't know if there is some development that had happened or if that was the yolks that I could see. I labeled mine, I labeled any, all, any of the eggs actually that I believed were potential duds as duds and I'll keep an eye on them. I believe I gotta check on them again and candle them closer to the end and on lockdown if they're still looking the same, the ones that I labeled as duds 
I'll remove them and dispose of them. Morgan's eggs are doing really awesome. I believe there's only one, I think there's only one dud, if my memory serves me correct, out of his batch of 11. So 10 of Morgan's eggs have made it on to day seven and hopefully they continue on. The next update will be on day 25 whenever we go on lockdown and we wait for the ducklings to hatch. So it's day 25 and that's exciting because that means it's lockdown day. And that means that we are going to basically set the eggs to sit and wait for the chicks to, the, well, the ducklings to actually hatch. So I'm used to hatching chicks. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this lid. Um, actually, shoot, I need to get a uh, rag. All right, okay, I'm back, I got my rag. So basically this is a, uh, I've dampened this rag. And the purpose of that is to lay it down in the base of the tray for the duck eggs to rest on. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove all the eggs out so I can lay this in. All right, so now that I've got it out, we're gonna go ahead, there's still quite a bit of water in the tray, so that's fine, I don't think I need to add any. And we're gonna go ahead and lay this in the bottom. And at the same time as I'm putting the eggs back in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, candle them again to see if, because we did have some potential duds, to see if we have any duds. So this one's pretty solid, so that's gonna go in. We'll go ahead and get this lid back on. And we'll see what the humidity is at and then adjust it from there. Now for the last set of days, we are going to drop the temperature down one degree. There we go. So we're gonna set it down to 98.5 because we had set it originally to 99.5 during the period. So it's gonna start registering its temperature. It's going kind of crazy right now. So because we want the humidity extra high during the hatching period, we're gonna go ahead and add some more water to it. Um, it's not saying that the humidity is as high as I want it, even though I put the damp rag in there. You want for the last, from day 25 to day 28, you want the temperature at 98.5 and the humidity between 75 and 85 percent. So I'm going to go ahead and add more water. And I went ahead because my thermometer is acting a little wonky. Suddenly I added a uh, additional one. Uh, just a manual thermometer just to make sure things are right. So I can see and double check. It's day 28 and we have started to have some pips yesterday actually and then overnight we've had two ducklings hatch. We had a third one almost hatch but it had pipped, made a hole in it for its beak and at some point in the night I guess got stuck. Um, I think it was our first one to pip and I, I didn't want to intervene because I don't want to. I didn't want to open the brooder. I'm sorry, the in, sorry the incubator. I'm trying to not open the incubator unnecessarily just to keep that uh, humidity and temperature regulated for the other eggs that are still in the process of hatching. Um, but unfortunately, at some point, I guess it got stuck and it ended up passing away. But at some point in the night, I guess it got stuck. I don't know what happened. Maybe it just didn't fully develop. Um, but it gave up and it ended up passing away before it could fully hatch, um, which I guess can happen. I think that's kind of a sign that they were they were weak for some reason. Maybe something happened in development. I don't know, um, but this can happen. And uh, like I said, I just I try not to intervene um, if I can help it. It's 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 kind of a, it's kind of a, a gamble sometimes whenever you try to assist a hatch. So unfortunately, we did lose one. But we have another duckling that's actually in the process of hatching right now. 
but uh, oh my gosh, they're so cute. We're gonna go ahead and get these two set up in the brooder so they can finish drying off. Look at how tiny they are. You guys are so cute. Make sure they got plenty of warmth. Yeah, it's pretty warm here. The this one good. likes me. <laughs> This one's the smallest one. It must have been the, must have been the latest one that hatched. I'll let these guys relax for a bit. Latest means latest means just to give you guys some perspective, they are so tiny. Look at them next to my hand, like this one. Sweetheart, I think this is the oldest one. Look at how small it is in my hand. Hey, sweetheart. There you go. Lulu, are those feather babies in there? Lulu's always excited for new babies. Oh, look at them, you're okay. So we have a duckling that just hatched and um, I, I actually stepped in and did an assisting because I noticed that where it had pipped and it had formed the hole in the, the hole in the shell that it was breaking out of, I noticed that its beak, it had a beak injury, which I was kind of like concerned about. So I'm actually about to take it out. I let it kind of rust for a minute to try and let it finish separating from the eggshell, but um, I'm actually about to take it out. Set it up inside a bucket under the heat lamp. The other two are doing great. I just, hopefully it makes it come back. I'm gonna let it rest and dry off a little bit and get plenty warm and let that umbilical cord detach. And then um, try and see what we can do for it. It's, I noticed that its eyes compared to the other ducklings is just, it's smaller. So I don't know if maybe it has a deformity. But we'll see. So I don't know what happened with uh, that duckling and, uh, or what happened with the, the duckling that didn't complete the hatch. I'm not sure exactly why that happened because the humidity right now, the humidity is up to 88%. So I don't think that the humidity is too low. I think there's plenty of humidity and it's helping them. I mean, the first two ducklings hatched fine. No issue, thankfully. But I'm currently monitoring the rest of the eggs uh, I've got, I think, two or three eggs actively hatching right now, and then I think I've got two or three more eggs pipping now. So, um, that's it. I can hear them chirping right now. So, we'll, we'll see. I'm just going to hope, hopefully the rest of them hatch and are healthy. One of the eggs that is pipped uh, is Morgan's, so I'm eager to see Morgan's duckling hatch. That's exciting. So it's day 31, and as of right now, we had, um, before today, we had uh, four of the eggs from our Buff Orpington ducklings, um, from our breeding flock of Buff Orpington ducks. And so we've been waiting for Morgan's eggs to hatch, and we had one pip. Well, yesterday we had a second one pip, and so now we've got two ducklings hatched, and now there's a third of his eggs 
that has pipped. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get out the uh, two ducklings that have pipped. And I think one of them is a Cayuga or a Cayuga cross. All right, Leon, come here. Ready? Hi, little ones. Oh yeah, really dark. Look at them. Hi, sweethearts. It's really dark. That one's gotta be a Cayuga. Well, you've got something stuck on your head. So, let's go ahead. It's a piece of the eggshell. Yeah, it's a piece of the eggshell. I want to hold the black one. So this one. one is a khaki Campbell. Here, buddy, hold this one. Can you take it? This one's a khaki Campbell. I want to hold, hold the on, black hold on. one. Hold on, hold on. I want to hold the black one. Right, and then this one, I believe, is a Cayuga. Well, most likely a Cayuga crossed with a Khaki Campbell. There you go. All right, you got them, buddy? Yep. All right, we're going to take those to the brooder, and then we've got another one. This one right here, I think. Is, I saw one that was pipped. So we're going to go ahead and let those finish out. No, that one's... Oh, is that one pipped? I don't know. We're going to let them, I see, we're gonna I let see them the rest. Right, so let's I go ahead and take those over to the... Thank you, baby. Why are you screaming at me? Hi, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, this one's definitely a khaki cam. Okay, this one's the khaki Campbell. And then this one is looking pretty black. Look at you guys. You're so cute. Oh, hi. 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 So our four that hatched are doing really well. We had one, one of the ducklings. Let me try and show you guys. So one of the ducklings had uh, damage to its beak. Do you see that? When it hatched, the, the beak was damaged and it actually had, uh, its head was kind of swollen, but it's, its head's looking more normal now. So thankfully it's recovering and doing good. And its beak is healing. It's not, we're not worried about it. Oh, let me get your little foot. You keep stretching it out. There, oh. <laughs> there you go. You're doing good. They're feeling good. Yes, there's a good baby. Yeah, so they are the four that hatched a couple days ago are doing great. And now we have six. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, you guys are so cute. We're gonna put you guys in the heat. Put you guys in the warm. Get you guys all dried out. Bane. Bane, can you just not even with the feather babies? He's like laid down. What? What, Bane? Oh, man, here comes Lulu. They all want to be part of this. Hi. Oh, my goodness. They're so cute. Oh, is Lulu the special guy? Yes, this is our little special guy. His, look at how good the swelling's looking yeah, on his head. He almost, normal almost looks normal, yeah. Hi. What are you doing? Well, you're still a little wet. Hi, I see you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Like totally intrigued by me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, handle. I think this one likes us because it, it's always showing interest in me whenever we come over. Whoops! Hi! Hi! You good girl, Lulu. Good girl. Hey. What are you doing? Lulu. Oh. Hi. What are you doing? Did you find the tripod? Hi. Oh, you are just the cur most curious little. Oh, oh. 
pew. Oh, that's as high as you can climb, little one. Are you happy now? You're at the highest point. Good boy, Bane. It's a good boy, Bane. Don't flop. Don't flop. It's a lap duck. It's a lap duck. Come here. Come here. Oh, here leave that one alone. I think that one's trying to eat, buddy. Let it eat. Oh. Alright, let's go ahead and let them rest, okay? Hi, hey, sweet Hi. Hey. It's okay. Yeah, try Magnolia. What are you doing over there? Thank you. you. Alright, Bane, yes, go. A good boy, Bane. Oh, oh. so big, Magnolia. I know, isn't she? Oh, oh my goodness. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one wants to go back, baby. Come here. Alright, this one seems totally content here with us. Oh, oh I just <laughs> pecked Bane's eye. Oh, Bane. That's a good boy. You're such a good, patient boy. See, why don't you put that one back? This one's really interested in being held by us. It's totally happy with being held by us. Isn't it cute? Oh, it's so cuddly. This, this one's probably going to be the cuddliest stuff we, we have. <laughs> oh, it's totally happy. Oh, Especially look like at you finding your legs. <laughs> They're all trying to get down, you guys. Plenty warm. Get the them nice the and dry. The heat's the warmest. Look at them. The heat's the warmest right here. Hi, beautiful babies. So it's day 36, and there is no more activity. Um, we managed to successfully hatch two of Morgan's duck eggs. Unfortunately, we had one hatch and it, it didn't do well. It was uh, I don't know I don't know what happened. It was fine, and then all of a sudden it wasn't, and it ended up passing away. And then the other that pipped, I didn't see it pip, but it pipped and it pipped at the wrong end of the egg. It, it pipped at the pointy end of the egg and by the time I found it, it had already passed away and I think that it drowned. And that can happen. That is, um, you want ducklings. Ducklings are supposed to pip at the round end where the air pocket is. And if they pip at the pointy end, then they aren't making it to that air pocket. And so they can, they can suffocate, unfortunately. And unfortunately, I didn't catch it because I just didn't see it. But um, I had left it... I had left the remainder of the eggs to see if we'd have any more hatched, and no more hatched. So we ended up managing to get four of our buff ducklings to hatch, and one Kaki Campbell from Morgan, and one Cayuga from Morgan. So let's go check them out. Well, here are the little quackies. Hi, babies. Yeah. Oh, look at you guys. You guys doing good in there? Yes. And here they are. So we've got the four buff ducklings. And then right there is the little khaki Campbell. And then here is the little Cayuga. And they are doing really good. Even the one. Give me a little one. I know, I know. This is the one with the odd beak injury from during hatching. It's doing great looks like a normal duckling aside from the injury and it's it's healing up good and the rest of them are doing great hey little ones hi are you looking at me i saw you what are you doing hey puppies oh hi are you going to talk to me are you the one that likes us kind of maybe haven't decided yet hi are you curious There. You guys are so cute. Hi. Hi. You are the most curious of a bunch. Hi. 
climbed up in my lap, I could tell. There you go. You see what color on my fingers? There you go, guys. See, I'm safe. You're okay. You're okay. Just gonna pet you. There you go. See, I'm safe. Oh, he's letting me pet him. Hi. Oh, is that enough? <laughs> so they are doing great. The four buffs are actually lined up to go to their new homes. So we decided to keep the Khaki Campbell and Cayuga for ourselves. Um, we love the Cayuga breed. They are so pretty. They kind of have that like bluish green beetle tint to them and they lay the, the gray and black tinted eggs. And so we are going to keep the little Cayuga and then the Khaki Campbell is it's just too cute. And we can't, we can't just keep one duck, we got to keep two. So we'll be adding them to the flock and yeah. They're so cute. I love ducklings. So, next experiment we're gonna do is we're gonna try and see if we can get the buff mama ducks to sit on some eggs. I'm currently letting those collect up. And uh, we'll do a video on that as well. So hopefully we get some more ducklings and we'll see if we can get a better hatch rate. Because that was not a very good percentage. <laughs> this was this was hard. And um, I mean, it's, it is hard. I've read where people say that the expected, you can expect to get like maybe 30 to 40, 30 to 50% hatch rate from incubating duck eggs. And obviously I don't have a good turner for duck eggs. I only have a turner for chicken eggs. So that makes it hard because now you're, now you're adding in human error because I'm having to open up that incubator and turn the eggs manually five to seven times a day. And so um, I think it would have been better if I would have had a proper turner. And then of course this incubator is also old and there were some periods where the humidity and the temperature were acting really, really crazy, like very erratic and just changing constantly. So that could have been also an issue as well. So we will see about that. Um, but I think I think that was that, I think that was the biggest biggest problem with incubating was just my error um, on turning the eggs and not doing it perfectly, so to speak. So I think if I get a different incubator, get a proper egg turner, and um, try, I'm gonna try again and see if I can have a better success at hatching duck eggs. And we'll see. They're so cute. 